In this tutorial, we're going to go over the camera tool in Toonly. Now this tool allows you to add some really nice cinematic effects to your animations, such as zooming in, zooming out, panning left or right, or tilting up and down. You can also do a mix of all of the above if you'd like. Now before we start moving this camera around, there's a few things you need to know. So first, let's take a look down at the timeline. You've got your camera bar here in red. The camera icon has a slash in it right now because it's not activated. Now if we activate it by clicking on it, you'll notice the screen gets a little muted. It's not as bright as it was before. Let me show that to you again. See how when I turn it on and off, it changes? There's a thin overlay layer on top which indicates the camera's framing. At this point, the camera is showing the entire scene. If you wanted to zoom in, say on the character, you would need to bring the framing down onto the character. The camera tool uses keyframes. So there's one here at the beginning of the scene, and there's another one down here at the end of the scene. Are these little round um, icons. You can also add keyframes on the fly anywhere within the bar, just by double clicking. So I've clicked on the initial keyframe, and when I did that, you'll see this little tiny green square in the upper right. This is your resize tool. So now, once that green square appears, we can start working with the framing of the camera. So I would like to start with a medium close-up of the character, and then we'll zoom out to a wider shot. So since I'm on the initial keyframe, I have set the framing the way I'd like it. And now I'll go over to my ending keyframe. And right now it's a wide shot and I think that's perfect. So let's do a quick preview of the camera framing first. And then after that, we'll preview the actual camera movement. We click to the beginning and click play. We're going to see the framing that we just set up. So it was close and now it's pulling out to a wide shot. Obviously, the camera didn't do the actual zoom there, so in order to see the actual movement, we need to go into preview. So he's close up, and now the camera is pulling back to reveal the sand dune. So that's looking great. So let's do another scene, and this time we'll pan the camera from left to right. So I've created this little airport scene, and I'd like to have the camera come over here from the airport end and pan over to the airplane itself. So I've clicked my keyframe and my little green resize tool appeared, which allows me to zoom in and position my camera. So let's make sure we've got our building here. I think that looks just lovely. And that's our first keyframe. And then we're gonna go over here to our ending keyframe resize the camera and reposition it and we'll end here on this little guy. So let's take a look once again at the framing first and then we'll preview it. So our camera is just going to move over just like that. Now if we hit preview and there it is. That's our little pan. In addition to zooming and panning the camera you can also move it up and down. It's the same technique as before. You can also add multiple keyframes within the camera bar by double clicking at the point where you'd like them to appear. And then you would just adjust your settings as desired. To remove a keyframe, you hit the Alt button and click. On a Mac, it's the Option button and click. There's one more setting I want to show you. Right click on your camera bar and you'll get the camera settings menu. Easing. Easing affects how your camera moves, how quickly it comes in or if it slows down, if it accelerates or decelerates. There's a whole bunch of different options that you can choose from. I recommend playing with them to see which one you like the best. We'll choose elastic and we'll have it do in and out. 
You can also choose for it to only affect the in movement or the out movement. It's your choice. So let's preview this real quick so we can see what it looks like. See how it just kind of bounces in and out. You can also combine your camera movements with actual character movements. For example, if you wanted to follow a character as they walk across the scene, or in the case of our airport scene, we could have this airplane taxi along the runway and follow it with the camera. I'm going to start by setting keyframes for my plane. So I'm going to click my plane keyframe. That's where I want it to start. That's fine. And I want it, I, I'm going to click my ending point. So there's my ending keyframe. I'm going to have it taxi down here. I think that's fine. Now for our camera, we're going to start with our beginning keyframe and we need to move it onto our little airplane. And then our ending keyframe, we want it to end over here where our airplane stopped. So let's take a quick look. So here's our framing. So it's just going to follow the airplane as it taxis. And if we preview, the camera follows the plane as it taxis. So that's it. Camera movements in Toon Lee. Thank you for watching.